what are the laboratory tests we needed to assess somebody who has a high a metabolic acidosis one you need to look at the urine test for glucose to see whether this patient has hyperglycemia at the same time you look for ketones in the urine to make sure that you are not dealing with diabetic ketoacidosis electrolytes are also needed as we discussed before to calculate the anion gap including chloride and bicarbonate urea and creatinine are needed to make sure that you are not dealing with a uremic metabolic acidosis and lactate will also tell you whether this metabolic acidosis is coming from a hyperlactatemia or you are dealing with lactic acidosis when you try to assess a patient with metabolic acidosis certain gaps need to be measured what are these gaps and what what is their implication the first one as we mentioned is the anion gap second one is the delta gap the third one is the urinary anion gap and the fourth one is the osmolar gap what is the we already discussed about the anion gap so let's look at what exactly is the delta gap the delta gap is a straight difference between the change in the anion gap and the change in the bicarbonate that means the delta gap suppose you say that the normal anion gap is 12 and the normal bicarbonate is 24 what is the measured anion gap and what is the measured bicarbonate so the change in 12 minus the measure or the measured anion gap minus 12 and the measured bicarb 24 minus the measured bicarbonate will give you the delta gap so the delta gap is also calculated by the sodium plus chloride minus 36 so this is also a rough formula but the delta gap is actually a ratio of the change in the difference between the change in the anion gap minus the change in the bicarbonate so this ratio can be interpreted as if the delta gap is minus 6 that means there is a mixed high and normal anion gap metabolic acidosis if the gap is between minus 6 to plus 6 that means there is only a high anion gap metabolic acidosis if the delta gap is more than 6 plus 6 that means there is a mixed high anion gap metabolic acidosis plus a metabolic alkalosis which can also coexist what is the delta ratio the delta ratio is the change in the anion gap by the change in the bicarbonate so the normal anion gap is assumed to be 12 and the normal bicarbonate is assumed to be 24 so the delta anion gap by that means the formula which i mentioned before measured anion gap minus 12 and 24 minus the measured bicarbonate will give you the delta ratio that is the interpretation of the uh, uh, delta ratio the delta ratio if it is 0.4 then you are looking at a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis if the delta ratio is between 0.4 to 0.8 there that means there is a mixed high and normal anion gap metabolic acidosis if the gap is between 0.8 and 1 there is a purely high anion gap metabolic acidosis and if it is 1 to 2 still it could be a pure high anion gap metabolic acidosis if this gap is more than 2 then it's a high anion gap metabolic acidosis with a pre existing metabolic alkalosis this pre existing metabolic alkalosis could be a primary metabolic problem or it could be a compensation for a respiratory problem which we will see subsequently what about the urinary anion gap in patients who have a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis you also need to identify whether this in normal anion gap is coming from uh, a git loss or a renal tubular loss so the urinary anion gap is is represented by the difference between the sum of sodium and chloride and chloride sodium and potassium and chloride the urinary this is the urinary sodium plus urinary potassium minus the urinary chloride this will help you to differentiate between the git and renal causes of a norm, hyperchloremic normal anion gap metabolic acidosis if the urinary anion gap is low that means the G, there is a gi loss of base if there is no change in the urinary anion gap then it's a renal loss of the base if the urinary gap is negative that means you get a minus number you will get a severe uh, diarrhea if it is very high that means you get it is because of altered urinary acidification which is very uncommon in an intensive care patient the fourth gap you need to remember is the osmolar gap this is especially true uh, 
in those patients who come to us with alcohol in intoxication or sometimes ethylene glycol toxicity. The calculated osmolarity of the blood is given by this formula 2 into sodium plus glucose plus urea or 1.86 into the sodium uh, plus glucose by 18 and blood urea by 2.8 plus 9. So you measure the osmolality by an osmometer and you calculate the osmolarity with the either of these two formulae and you subtract these two numbers, you will get an osmolar gap. The osmolar gap is usually less than 10. So if there is a high anion uh, osmolar gap, that means if the osmolar gap you are getting is more than 10, that means there is a presence of an abnormal solute in significant amounts in the blood sample you are measuring at that point of time. And this could be ethanol or ethylene glycol. So this is the significance of somebody who presents with a high anion gap metabolic acidosis for whom you do not have any uh, explainable cause for the acidosis. Once you know that there is a metabolic acidosis, you have already seen that the respiratory system compensates by deep in, uh, uh, by Kussmaul's respiration. This is an act of compensation. So we should know whether this compensation is adequate or not. This compensation acts by decreasing the arterial CO2 so that the pH comes back to normal. The, the acidic pH is detected by both the peripheral and central chemoreceptors in the respiratory center and therefore it's nearly instantaneous response. The maximal compensation usually takes about 12 to 24 hours, not longer than that. The last two digits of the pH should approximately equal the CO2 for a pH of between 7.10 to 7.60. But for you to assess whether this compensation is adequate or there is an ad additional respiratory disorder, the expected CO2 for any bicarbonate value is given by the formula 1.5 plus 8 rule. That means the expected CO2 is equal to 1.5 times the measured bicarbonate plus 8. Suppose somebody has a bicarb of 10. That means 1.5 into 10 is 15. 15 plus 8 is 23. That patient should have a CO2 of 23. If the pH, if the CO2 is higher than 23, so in, it means that in addition to the metabolic acidosis, the patient also has a respiratory acidosis. If the CO2 is 20, that means less than 23, less than the expected CO2, that means the patient in addition to the metabolic acidosis and compensation has a primary respiratory alkalosis. But there is a limit to this. The limit value of compensation is the lowest level to which the CO2 can fall. This is typically about 8 to 10 millimeters of mercury. So if somebody has a CO2 of 6 or 7, it means that there is a primary respiratory alkalosis irrespective of the compensation even before you apply this 1.5 plus 8 rule. So that's about metabolic acidosis and its compensation.